Welcome to UNESCO. Today we are joined by Shasta Weiss, a very impressive young woman who uh, is the first certified civilian pilot from Afghanistan and has done quite a few amazing feats since then. I hear that you're also the first woman, who, the first person who's graduated uh, uh, from college in your family. How did you find yourself drawn to such fields that are actually um, not feminine, at least not a, don't have a, a reputation of being very feminine fields? That's a good question. Um, you know, growing up, I was extremely shy. My family came to the United States from Afghanistan as refugees. And I grew up with my five sisters, big household, thinking I'm going to get married at a young age and have a big family like my mom and, and her mother and generations before her. But, you know, here I was, this shy, timid uh, girl who just didn't really enjoy school. You know, every time I'd have a test or I'd be in class, I would think, why am I here, you know? I, I just didn't find a connection with education until I found aviation. And I often tell kids that, you know, I grew up afraid of flying, and it wasn't until I faced my fear um, that I realized my greatest fear in life was my greatest passion. And from there, you know, I found something that I loved, which motivated me to take school more seriously, to read that book, to uh, research, to open my eyes to the unknown. Um, and what's so unique about aviation is that the whole environment, it's very elevating. You're up in the air, you're, you know, above the ground, you're in, in this environment that's very empowering. And I often found myself that it didn't matter if I was a boy or a girl, if I was a refugee, an Afghan, you know, I was the pilot. That's all that mattered in the airplane. So that's kind of how it all started. Um, and, you know, my family coming from Afghanistan, education was not um, very available to women uh, at the time. So out of my family, my six sisters, I was the first to get a bachelor's and the first to get a master's degree. Yeah. Are you the youngest? I am the second oldest. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I have one older and four younger. So you've recently completed a solo flight around the world in 30 stops. Um, what gave you the idea? What motivated you to, to attempt this? That's a good question, too. You know, the more I got into aviation, the more I realized that there's more that I can be doing. Um, oftentimes, I would watch the news and I'd see situations of women in Afghanistan, you know, how they were living, and I kept thinking, you know, why was I so lucky? Why were my sisters so lucky that we, we were able to get out uh, when we did? And so I always had that, you know, growing up thinking I need to do something to give back to the girls who didn't make it out or girls in general all over the world that don't have opportunities that I have been blessed with. So the more that I got into aviation, and aviation is so global, it's something, you know, it's an aircraft that can literally take you anywhere in the world. I thought, why not kind of combine my passion for flying and this need to give back to women around the world? And I thought Dream Soar, which is a nonprofit organization, um, the whole purpose of this flight is for me to fly into these different countries. It was 30 stops, 22 different countries across five continents, where I went out to different cities talking to young girls about believing in themselves and believing in their dreams. And so you've connected with thousands of uh, young girls during that trip around the world. Uh, and you, I think, you uh, were talking to them about science, about STEM fields, which is uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, which, uh, well, I mean, around the world, there are about 30% of researchers in science that are women. Um, in engineering, that's even lower. It's between 10 and 20 percent. Aviation, I can't even imagine. I don't know the number, but it must be really tiny. Um, can you tell me what the links are between aviation and science? Absolutely. So, you know, the whole concept of aviation, uh, it's, it deals a lot with physics. You know, you're up in the air and, and you're dealing with the four different forces that allow an aircraft to accelerate and move forward. Um, but, you know, even as me becoming this pilot to fly around the world, um, you know, so breaking it down, science, there's a science to weather that I really had to dive deep, uh, dive deep into to understand climatology, what makes a monsoon season a monsoon season. 
uh, what makes hurricanes and, and you know, different weather patterns around the world. You know, I had to put my science glasses on for that. Uh, technology, aviation right now, the direction it's going, um, you know, the more that you see in the cockpit is a lot more technology. So I had to, you know, when you, you think of Amelia Earhart who flew, attempted to fly around the world, in this modern day there's a lot more technology that I was able to utilize so that, you know, I could fly efficiently by myself around the world. Um, engineering, you know, flying a small um, single engine aircraft around the world, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to do if you don't engineer fuel tanks to put inside the aircraft. So engineering the fuel system, um, you know, that, that took, you know, thinking outside of the box and putting my engineering glasses on. And then finally math, you know, math is something that is used all over the world and we use it more than, than we realize, I feel like. But for me as a pilot, I had to make sure, you know, when I got to my, my halfway point, point across the ocean that I had enough fuel to get to my destination or do I turn back around? You know, so STEM is really, it is in every career field that you can think of. And oftentimes, you know, um, one of my sisters said, well, engineering seems really boring and dull. And I said, well, you know, what do you enjoy? And she said, I like makeup. And I said, well, do you know that it was an engineer that engineered this foundation for you with that specific color and that scent? And, you know, you don't, engineering is not necessarily building, you know, something. It's, it's bringing something together, a concept, an idea. Right, figuring out problems. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so it applies so, to everything. Essentially everything you see. So. so today you are quite an inspiration for a lot of young ladies. I mean, today you were kind enough to come and speak to uh, about 50 young women who came to UNESCO to listen. Um, what were your inspirations? Oh my gosh, so hands down, you know, as the more east that I got on this trip around the world, the more tired I became, the sun was going down sooner, the days were longer, and I honestly feel that if I didn't have this purpose to fly around the world to inspire the next generation, then maybe I wouldn't have finished. But after, you know, when I'd be in the airplane for nine, 10, 11 hours, I would think about that interaction that I would have with kids. And it, it made me have such a big sense of, of, you know, reasoning for why I'm doing this. Why am I in the middle of the ocean, you know, 10 hours in this heat? And that those, their reaction, the kids' reaction, their questions, their curiosity, the looks on their faces was what kept me going around the world. So, you know, oftentimes, you know, when I come to these events to speak, the kids look at me as if I'm inspiring them, but they were my inspiration to keep going. As we were saying, you've come very far in a field in which there are very few women for whatever reasons. I mean, often it's really just a, a matter of image and not, uh, not reality, that much we know. Um, how did you manage to overcome those barriers? What were there teachers along the way or specific things or specific uh, role models or, or even just um, programs that helped you out or that really helped you yeah, keep going? Absolutely. So, you know, I think for me, when you think about people, it's very different for the individual. But for me, what really attracted me and motivated me was flying, you know, just the sheer enjoyment that I got being in the air. And once, you know, I found something that I connected with, from there, I started to reach out to other women in aviation. And again, there are not that many, unfortunately. Um, but luckily, I reached out to the first woman who ever flew around the world in 1964, Jerry Mock. And it's interesting because even as I went to go meet her in her home, I was so nervous. And I kept thinking, you know, she's going to look at me like, what, what is this girl doing? I mean, what makes her think she can fly around the world? I mean, I had all these hesitations, and I wasn't very confident. But once I, I went to her house, you know, as I was sitting in front of her, I was thinking, okay, what should I ask her? What should be my first question? So the first thing I asked her was, you know, Jerry, after you flew around the world, what was the first thing that you did? And to my surprise, she said, after I flew around the world, I took two weeks to spend time with my, my family, and then I went on a commercial plane to Afghanistan. And that just, my jaw dropped. I thought, of all the places you went to Afghanistan and she said yes I couldn't go during my flight around the world um, but there was something that was attracting me there so I I after I landed I went to Afghanistan I spent a few days there 
she showed me pictures of the mountains, of kids eating ice cream that she had pictured. And that really opened the door for me to be very comfortable with her, you know, telling her about my background, telling her about where I'm from and what I'm looking to do. So finding that mentor, I mean, it was critical for me. And that's the one thing that I encourage young girls out there is, you know, it could be very scary, it could be very intimidating, but, you know, the more you open yourself up to these very intelligent women who all have been in your shoes at one point or another, you know, get past your your fears or, or your um, you, just how confident you may feel. Go out there, find that mentor, and it's going to forever change your life. And maybe just uh, to close, what is your funnest memory, best memory of this experience, going around the world, meeting all these people? Wow. That's such a hard question. Um, <laughs> absolutely. So, of course, going back to Afghanistan, uh, Kabul, that was very, very special for me because I got to meet a lot of young kids who I saw so much of myself in them. And, uh, you know, just being there being with the kids, hearing their stories, and then talking about my flight around the world. It was just an, an experience that I really can't put into words. Um, and then also, too, in Greece, I had the opportunity to go to um, a, a, it's not really an orphanage, it's just a, a shelter area for kids who may not be safe at home to go and kind of seek refuge. So, you know, I went to this, it's called the Smile of a Child. I went to this, uh, I guess you can call it a school. And connecting with these kids who really don't, you know, they don't have, they're, they're either refugees or they've been abandoned by their parents. You know, they're all together in, in this group, in the school. Connecting with them, I mean, that was a very special moment, um, one that I'll never forget. But I have all of these memories around the world, and I'm so grateful that, these countries have opened their borders, their doors to me to come in and, and hosted me. I'm, I mean, the whole experience is just absolutely amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing that experience with us, those experiences with us. And thank you so much for showing young girls that they should dream big and they can go as high as they want to. Um, thanks again. Um, and... Um, Keep checking back with us. During the whole month of March, we're going to be highlighting a lot of women scientists and a lot of women who've made it very, very far and are doing an amazing job really changing the world with their research and their work. Bye.